Lucille Ball is one of the most revered figures in the history of entertainment, but there are numerous things that even the most die-hard I Love Lucy fans might not know about the beloved entertainer and unlikely media mogul. From the fact that she wasn't a natural redhead to her days of being investigated by the FBI, join Facts First as we explore secrets Lucille Ball was hiding her whole career. She wasn't a natural redhead. When most people first think of Lucille Ball, they likely think of her with red hair. During the actress's most famous years, she became known for her iconic hair color. But those who knew her earlier days in Hollywood may know she wasn't always a redhead. She was born a brunette and worked that way for a good deal of her time in Hollywood. Long before creating I Love Lucy with husband Desi Arnaz, Lucille was a fledgling Hollywood star working with RKO Pictures. She ended up being let go by them, and she thought her days on screen were over before getting the idea for I Love Lucy. By the time of I Love Lucy's premiere, Lucille had her iconic red hair, and she kept it over the course of her remaining career. The person credited with inspiring Lucille Ball to change the color of her hair is a hairstylist named Sidney Gilleroff. Lucille had changed her hair color for films before, having appeared as a blonde in a couple features, but she had never before been seen as a redhead. The look clicked, and Lucille kept it. Of course, I Love Lucy has since usurped all of Lucille Ball's other works in popularity, so it may be hard for most fans to picture the actress without her iconic red hair. She changed her name to Diane Belmont. Very early on in Lucille's career, she was having an identity crisis. She had just begun modeling and wasn't sure how she wanted to present herself. Around the late 1920s, she changed her professional name for some time to Diane Belmont. The name didn't stick, and she ended up becoming best known as Lucille Ball. According to the late Lucille Ball, she came up with the name Diane Belmont when she was driving around one day and saw the Belmont racetrack. She claimed she had simply always liked the name Diane and liked the way it sounded when paired with the racetrack's name. She performed a few modeling jobs as Diane Belmont, though decided to give up the name when venturing into acting. She didn't like the business aspects of her work. When it came to the creative partnership of Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz, Lucille was the artist and Desi was the businessman. But this creative relationship came crashing down in the wake of their 1960 divorce. Although Lucille and Desi tried to keep things the same professionally after their divorce, their emotions got in the way. During the 60s, Desi sold his entire share of Desi Lu Productions to Lucille Ball. Lucille and Desi had created Desi Lu Productions as a way to work together because their current jobs weren't allowing them to spend enough time with each other. With the success of I Love Lucy, the production company became a pretty big deal. The smart people they were, Desi and Lucille, saw the opportunity to produce other shows under the Desi Lu Productions banner. Besides I Love Lucy, Desilu Productions also went on to produce notable programs such as Star Trek and Mission Impossible. When Lucille bought Desi Arnaz's shares of Desilu, she became the first ever female CEO of a big Hollywood production company. Many have prided Lucille for her feminist accomplishment, though it seems the actress would have much rather have been performing on stage than toiling away in the offices of her company. According to daughter Lucy Arnaz, Lucille was never quite comfortable with the business aspects of running Desi Lu Productions. Instead, she would have much rather have been performing in front of the cameras. Still, besides Desi, there was no one else who could run the company and keep its integrity the way that she could. She remained on board before eventually selling the company off in the late 1970s, though her children seem to be in charge of it today. Although Lucille Ball didn't enjoy the business aspects of running Desi Lu, she seems to have made some pretty good decisions. Apparently, Lucille stuck her neck out to keep both Star Trek and Mission Impossible on the air, and they both went on to be major hits. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. And stick around for a lot more about Lucille Ball. The FBI Investigated Her Though the public adored Lucille, there was one time during I Love Lucy's original run that the actress found herself being affected by a notable controversy. When I Love Lucy was on the air, America was incredibly afraid of communists. This fear sparked the creation of the House Un-American Activities Committee, which was tasked with investigating possible communists in America. There were many notable communists in Hollywood, but most of them kept their mouths shut. Stars could be blacklisted for their communist affiliations, and even being labeled as a communist could be enough to completely end your career in the entertainment industry. 
Because of this, Lucille Ball was incredibly frightened when she found out she was suspected of being a communist herself. The government didn't suspect Lucille was a communist for no reason. During the actress's younger days, she had apparently checked a box on a voter registration panel labeling herself as such. According to Lucille, she did this because her grandfather was a communist and she appreciated his values at the time. But Lucille also went on to say she wasn't active in the party and hadn't thought about her communist beliefs since her grandfather's passing years prior. On the surface, it seemed Lucille's insistence that she wasn't an active communist was enough to appease the American government. She testified before the House Un-American Activities Committee and was found to have no active communist affiliation. But the FBI continued to investigate both the star and her then-husband for many years. It remains uncertain if they were being spied on purely for their possible communist affiliations or if there were other things the pair were suspected of. The FBI investigated Lucille and Desi under the direction of J. Edgar Hoover, though the politician claimed to be a big fan of the couple in public. It doesn't appear as if the FBI's years of investigating the Hollywood power couple turned up much. There was one person who alleged they had attended a communist meeting at Lucille Ball's house, but that same person went on to oddly add that the beloved television star wasn't even there at the time. The FBI also alleged that Desi Arnaz performed a show in the 1940s that was sponsored by an organization that was alleged to be a front for the Communist Party. However, Desi was always incredibly patriotic and despised communism, having fled from a communist country as a boy. Another thing J. Edgar Hoover apparently didn't like was the series The Untouchables, which was produced by Desi Liu. The politician felt the show was inaccurate. She almost died filming I Love Lucy. One of the most memorable scenes from I Love Lucy's run remains the scene where the character of Lucy is attempting to learn how to make wine from stomping grapes. The scene occurs in the episode Lucy's Italian Movie and remains one of her most inspired physical routines. But it's been revealed in the time since that much of the physical comedy of the scene wasn't completely intentional. Not only that, Lucille may have actually been in some intense physical danger. The woman who was hired to film the scene alongside Lucille Ball was hired for her abilities to stomp grapes. The producers tracked down a real grape stomper, and the one who took the job didn't speak English very well. When it came time for Lucille to perform the classic scene, there was a miscommunication with the real-life grape stomper that caused her to get incredibly angry with Lucille and attack her for real. Because of this, the fight that ended up making it into the final cut wasn't actually staged. According to Lucille, she feared for her life during the moments when that authentic Italian grape stomper had her in her grasps. No one who was watching was aware anything had gone wrong. They simply believed Lucille was giving her all to the performance. The actress was certainly a hard worker who enjoyed giving her all to her physical performances, and she was likely just glad her sacrifices paid off. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you know Lucy wasn't a natural redhead? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.